Can you imagine a device with word processing and spreadsheet capabilities that is mobile and is able to store edited text? Let's forget everything you knew about modern devices and let's go back to 1992. Oh brother, or brother WP70, a perfect machine for office work? Let's find out together. Hello and welcome. My name is Martin and this is Tech R Evolution. Let's talk history a little bit, like we are not doing so already, but please bear with me for a second. It's kind of fascinating how these companies evolved, but you can see how it makes perfect sense. More than 100 years old company first established in Europe in 1958. In 1968, they take over the sewing machine factory in Manchester. In 1971, they produce first speed dot matrix printer and branch into office technology. In 1985, Brothers first electronic typewriter. In 1987, Brothers first fax machine and laser printer. Then laser multifunction machines, inkjet machines, mobile printers, and so on and so forth. But I do like the development from sewing machines. And if you remember the first dot matrix printers and electric typewriters, it somehow makes perfect sense. Anyways. Let's get back to the machine itself. This type is WD-70, manufactured in 1992 and was offered at the time for very affordable 400 US dollars, which in today's money is approximately 730-ish US dollars. Price of a good budget laptop that you can buy today. Additional features of these devices were word processing, spreadsheet capabilities, floppy drive for loading and saving results with a unique twist that I will come back to later, address book, schedule and calendar, framing and this beautiful CRT screen. It had 64 kilobytes of RAM and one megabyte of ROM and, and that is actually something and no it can't run Doom yet. All of this in lightweight package of measly 12 kilos or 26 pounds. And of course, it comes also with carrying handle, so you can consider this device as truly portable. Now, in reality, I cannot imagine this being carried anywhere. Uh, this is a beast and one handle that I am frankly afraid to use, as I do believe it will just break under all the weight, is not going to convince me about the mobility. Now, uh, let's try to turn this on and then Play with it a little the startup bit. menu is very simple and intuitive. It actually contains only eight items that you can choose from, plus some hidden ones that you can activate with the keyboard shortcut. Right off the bat, when you turn on the screen, I was very surprised by sharpness. For a device of this age, almost 30 years, it's quite amazing. You can insert paper very easily and are ready for print. And fun fact? You can actually still buy the cartridges or tapes for the device even now for approximately three dollars each. And again, for a device that is approximately 30 years old, it tells you something about how much it must have. The controls are very intuitive, even if you don't have the manual, which I don't have and was not able to find. You actually have an option to display an on-screen menu, but that is something that I found out later on. I find also amazing that it contains all the correct feature that I was not aware was available for these electronic typewriters and I think this is indeed a cool feature to have. Basically, you just type a word and if the machine detects that it is spelled incorrectly, it gives you an option to change it to the correct one if the word is contained in the internal dictionary or registry. And fun thing, if you are in typewriter mode, meaning that you type as you write, so not writing on the screen first, it auto-corrects the word by typing over the wrongly spelled word. The spreadsheet capabilities are simple, but functional. But I did not go in depth to find out if you can do any calculations. Although speaking of calculations and uh, getting back to the hidden menus, there is actually a calculator function that you can activate. Of course, the device does not have a numlock, so the operation is a bit cumbersome. But then again, it's better to have it and not need it, than need it and not have it. I have to mention one thing about the keyboard. The keyboard is great, but I'm used to the normal layout. So anytime I wanted to go back in the menu, I automatically reach to escape button, 
in top left, except there is no escape, just button to move to another line in the typewriter mode. Now for the calendar and scheduler. This is a nice function for planning, although I have to say that in 1992 you already had PDAs and Palm Pilots that you could use for this and since these devices were not compatible, I am not really sure if this would be viable to use on a day-to-day -day basis, except, and that's what this was intended for, I suppose, the office work. There are a couple of more features that you can use. Address book and framing. Again, the address book is very simple and intuitive to use. You have a selection of fields that you can fill in and do simple operations such as sort the list, print, etc. I suppose for small businesses this would have been viable, but at the time you already had PCs that were far superior in this, so I'm not sure if this would find much use. Framing is interesting. I was not sure what to expect, but at the end it's just a fancy naming for formatting options. It's basically drawing lines. And that is that. You have an option from vertical and horizontal, double and simple lines, and that's pretty much it. There are two more features in the menu that I was not able to fully explore yet. And that is disk utility and disk application. These are from preparing the disk to store data, which was one of the main marketed features of this device. Well, Let's just say it was a bit cumbersome, but I will get back to it in a little bit. Basically, the device uses floppy disks, but they have to be formatted in certain way, so at the time of this recording I was not able to make it work. Other than that, the device looks as you would expect. It's kind of a computer, but I would be really interested in someone trying to make it work with some games. The screen is pretty good and it does contain hardware that could in theory, supports some of the simplest games. It would be so cool if there would be some hidden feature or game that you can activate with some keyboard keys to get Space Invaders or similar game. But so far, I am not aware of anyone who made or is planning to make such modifications. But let's see, maybe in the future? Let's talk about an elephant in the room, this feature to store all the data on a floppy disk. As nice as it sounds, the format on the floppy disk is very unique and incompatible with other formats at the time. This ultimately meant that you could only use this data on this device, but not much anywhere else. Oh, the glorious time, the wild west of different formats and proprietary devices. In order to prepare your own disk to work with WP70, you had to format it for 240 kilobyte size, otherwise it will not be detected. Other than that, everything else was fairly easy. Now, I have to mention that they did realize the errors in their ways and very nicely shifted from the proprietary format to something that will be compatible with DOS. But the way they did it is a bit funny, uh, as they did switch the format later on, but this made all the old store data not compatible with newer machines. So all the work you had saved before you could not transfer to a newer model. I can imagine that it upset quite a few people, but it is what it is, as I mentioned, the wild west of technology. Now what do I think about the device? I think it's a nice trip back in time to look a little bit under the curtain of office machines. If not for the different formats, I would even say that this device can be used even now. In fact, some of them were used in the offices as late as 2004 in Germany for the same model as I have. It's quiet, I do love the keyboard, but then again, these old mechanical and clicky keyboards are just awesome on any devices. And the screen is surprisingly sharp and very comfortable for my eyes. I do like the more advanced features such as the autocorrect, even though it does take some time to go through the registry of all the words, but the fact that it's there, it is quite nice. And it's quiet. I mean, besides the keyboard and occasional beeping noise, you don't basically hear anything. No fan spins or other noise generated by this machine. Quite nice and fits into today's time when a lot of people are trying to create as little noise as possible with their devices. So, final conclusion, would this be viable in 2020? 
Uh, sadly no, but it was so close. Except this format issue, I can imagine that some people would be still using it even now. As it is, it will be taken care of in my collection and stored for future time. Hope you enjoyed the video and let me know in the comments below if you had any experience with Brother typewriters. I'm really interested, so please let me know. And if you have any suggestions uh, for what would like to see in the future, please let me know as well. If you like the video, I do appreciate if you press like button and subscribe. I would like to grow and uh, I will be creating new videos covering old and slightly newer technologies at least twice a week, including some old games reviews as well. Thank you for watching and take care.